Call the member for Parks. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and uh, I rise to speak on this matter of public importance uh, brought to the House by the member for Lyon. And uh, uh, I'd like to note that it, it is somewhat comforting, as a member of this place that sometimes uh, strives, thrives on adversity. That uh, at times um, like this, uh, we all tend to pull together. And I acknowledge uh, the minister now that's leaving the chamber for his visit to uh, my electorate on uh, on Monday and the prompt action uh, that came from uh, that visit. And uh, I also see the parliamentary secretary, not sure what his job is these days, but he was agriculture at the last flood we had and, uh, and acknowledged that uh, he came and, um, and, uh, and, look, and studied uh, uh, the losses that we, we had in the uh, Dubbo area last year. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is a big flood uh, in northern New South Wales. Uh, the, the, the levels in Moree, uh, the, the benchmark floods uh, in my lifetime have been 74 and 76. Uh, uh, this flood um, exceeded those and, and uh, was in, in, in comparison to the, to the flood of 55. Um, and a lot of the focus has been on the larger centres and, uh, and on the river systems, the Namoi River uh, and uh, uh, the towns of Bogabri, uh, Narrabri, we were and, uh, and on the Gwaida, uh, principally around Moree. Uh, but some of the more tragic stories that I'm getting through my office now and the battles we're having are actually coming from uh, unknown streams, from, uh, from cross-country uh, uh, flows, uh, mainly between Moree and Narrabri, uh, now focusing on the uh, Rowena community. And uh, there's been uh, large losses of stock and, uh, and grain. Uh, I understand there's machinery uh, uh, gone under uh, water and uh, uh, they're battling that at the moment. Uh, the levees that are around most of the homesteads there, uh, I'm not sure of the numbers, but quite a few of those uh, have not been sufficient and we're seeing inundation of homesteads uh, and, uh, and the farm infrastructure around that, which is a massive financial loss. So uh, this, this flood event is affecting different of my constituents in different ways. Uh, and uh, in, in Moree and uh, Yarraman, Palamalawar uh, and, uh, and villages uh, like uh, the smaller villages down the river, uh, there's been a wonderful response from the uh, SES, uh, the uh, Rural Fire Service, local volunteers and the local community helping each other out. And it's been quite heartwarming to see uh, that uh, level of support and how uh, people are helping each other out. And I was in Moree on Monday as the water was receding and uh, everyone was just rolling up their sleeves and, uh, and cleaning up the mess and getting rid of the mud uh, as the water went down. It was surprising how quickly they did that. The announcement of the Category C of the uh, Australian Government Disaster Relief Fund was very welcomed by many of those people. I just am disappointed, Mr Deputy Speaker, that some people tend to... Um, to see this as a, an opportunity to make a bit of, uh, of easy money. And, uh, and there's re reports uh, of people fronting Centrelink uh, uh, maybe mis uh, misrepresenting uh, the level of severity that they had personally because of the, uh, uh, the availability of the $1,000 payment. And uh, I, I would discourage people from doing that. I understand that the, uh, the government are trying to retrieve people that, uh, retrieve funds from people that receive funds uh, uh, Ill, uh, illegitimately in the Brisbane floods last year, and I understand that that will be the case in these floods. So the, this, this assistance is designed to help people that really need it, and believe you me, there are plenty of people that really need this assistance. But to think that people would rot the system, I, I would caution against that because ultimately um, it will catch up. Uh, also, I uh, welcome the uh, the $15,000 grants that were announced today for small business for flood damage. Uh, and that will be appreciated, but it will be a drop, in, a drop in the ocean, Mr Deputy Speaker, of what's going to be required. Uh, I, I have reports of one farmer, just his infrastructure to irrigation, the damage is over a million dollars on one farm alone. Uh, the loss I, I've heard of a, a drover who hasn't had a job since the end of October, uh, can't, uh, can't uh, 
uh, you know, leave, 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 get out onto the route because the, you know, they are unpassable because of water and uh, stock aren't moving. So someone like that is in real financial hardship. Uh, this doesn't cover loss of income, so there still will be hardship. I was speaking to a, uh, a small businessman who has a, uh, an, irrig an irrigation company and he said he hasn't worked uh, since the beginning of November. He employs six people. Now, he's, he's been paying those six people uh, so he doesn't lose them because uh, qualified staff are such a valuable commodity. Uh, but it's, it's, his debts are adding up because he, th this has been going on for some time. So there is going to be a need uh, to, to make sure that we don't uh, lose people uh, through financial hardship um, as this goes on. The other thing, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, that I'd like to speak about uh, is the impact on public infrastructure and uh, the cost to local government. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, on the black soil plains uh, of the, the Gwaida, uh, Moree and uh, Narrabri shires, the great irony uh, is that the most highly productive land uh, generally has the worst roads because the most highly productive land is the black soil uh, which is notoriously difficult and expensive to build roads on. Uh, there's generally a shortage of suitable gravel, road building materials and, uh, and they're very susceptible to uh, deterioration in the wet weather. And so councils across my electorate uh, have got losses in the tens of millions. The obvious, uh, the obvious uh, one uh, in the Gwaita Shire is the uh, is the Gravesend River Bridge, which I think will, will take months to repair. Uh, but a lot of causeways have been washed away, a lot of gravel's been washed off roads. And, uh, and I think uh, I was in discussions with the State Roads Minister, uh, the Honourable Duncan Gay, uh, back at Christmas time after the first floods went through with the Mayor of Moree Plains, uh, Mayor Katrina Humphreys. And, uh, and we were talking about the need for, rather than uh, flood payments to councils after uh, uh, disasters, to repair things to the level pre-flood, there is a good argument to be made to actually re engineer the repairs so that they will cover the next flood. Because what we're seeing now is uh, 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 roads repaired and then the next flood they're washing out. With, with a, it would be a better value for the, for the Australian taxpayer to actually put more money in now and repair these and not have to come back after the next flood. And the other issue we're having, uh, we have, Mr Deputy Speaker, is the difficulty that producers are having uh, getting produce from their farms. Now, uh, we had a fairly large harvest. Uh, some of it was downgraded but, uh, from, from the November rain. But at the moment, we've got huge tonnages of grain on farm. Uh, many of these farmers have got contractual agreements uh, with flour millers, uh, feedlots, uh, 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 users on the coast, uh, to, to deliver this grain on a timely manner. And it can't be shifted because the road uh, is, uh, is impassable. Uh, and so they're in real financial bind. Some of them are having trouble with contracts. Some of them have got uh, payments to make to finance companies. Uh, they are expecting to have that money in, and uh, and they can't shift the grain. So that is causing real, uh, real hardship. And uh, that also, I will give a plug here in closing, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, for the work that's been done by the Australian Rural Road Group, uh, that uh, is identifying the most in the importance of the first few miles uh, of a product. Everything that we buy on our supermarket shelves starts its life on a country road. And if that product can't do the first 10 kilometres, it can't do the last uh, 100 or 1,000. So uh, we need to, in this country, seriously look at bringing these roads up to a, to a, to a condition that will handle a flood situation like this. And so, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, I, I have welcomed the opportunity to uh, talk about the severity of the floods in the Parks electorate. And I'd like to close by acknowledging the great work uh, that my communities and the volunteers that have come from all over New South Wales uh, to help put this back together. But uh, just to let those people know that this parliament is still thinking about them and to realise that their hardship will be going on for some time yet.